Top five, top five, top five. So on top, we'll go back with another video. I'm Strange Wing. He is Nate. Today we're doing top five Bill Murray movies for no goddamn reason. Well, Asteroid City comes out this weekend. I don't know when this video and, is going to get released, but... And that's what it was supposed to be for. No. Because when I went and I looked at the cast, I was like, Bill Murray, he has a bunch of movies. We can do a top five for him. Yeah. I'll throw that on the list. I'll send the Nate. And then I'll let him choose. And then I was looking... And he's not in Asteroid City. Hmm. He was supposed to be in Asteroid City, but he dropped out due to something with COVID. But uh, it's a Wes Anderson movie coming out, so I was like, fuck it, we're going to leave it. Because the Wes Anderson movie might or may not make one of our list. But we're doing top five Bill Murray movies. He'll tell you how we do our top fives, and then we'll get into it. He's going to start with his five and four. I'll give my five and four, three, two, three, two, then we trade off number ones. We also have something called the Zemeckis Rule, which just means if we both have the same movie on our list, but one person has it at least two spots or higher, we only talk about it once. Number five, Strange Wayne, is going to be What About Bob? When Bill Murray plays Bob Wiley, who gets a therapist and annoys the fuck out of the therapist, especially he falls on vacation. And he's not trying to annoy the fuck out of him, but he does annoy the fuck out of him. That's funny to me. Very solid, funny movie. This was a super hard list for me personally, because these are our favorites. But with the exception of a few, his characters has they share so many similarities. Yeah. Over multiple films. Right. And then you get a lot of really good Bill Murray performances. Well, that's a ten minute screen time. Like in Caddyshack, which didn't make my list. Mm -hmm. Or there's some Wes Anderson movies where he pops up for five or ten minutes. If that. Yeah. So, it was like, ah. Well, how do I do this list? Because number one was easy and everything else, honestly, could be interchangeable based on the day. But number four is going to be a little surprise. It's going to be Peter Venkman from Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. That's my number four. Oh, there we go. Four yeah. or four. He has help with the movie. Yeah. He has four guys he can bounce off of. Obviously, the famous scene where he's bouncing off of the hotel manager, Dickless. Mm hmm Is it is this true? Yes. This, sir, this man has no dick. <laughs> Fucking hilarious stuff. Right. He's an asshole. Like, a likable, lovable asshole. Mm hmm And because of that and the ghost thing, it just puts it in a whole different world. Scorner Weaver, he plays really well with her. And that romance, and they have chemistry there. And the guys, obviously, has chemistry with them, too. Yeah. And they all bring something different to the table. Obviously, Bill Murray, he's the shining light of the movie, which is why it made my list, because yeah. he is incredible in it. He definitely feels like the main Ghostbuster. Yeah. Yeah, like, sure. he definitely, like, he... He's the poster boy. Yeah, yeah, everyone in that movie is good, obviously. They all went on to have pretty good careers. But it's like... He steals every scene he's in in that movie. Like, I I couldn't put it any higher because of, like, how crowded the movie is. Yeah. But 4 felt right. That's fair. Everyone has their memorable part in it. But that movie's great. Even yeah. side characters. Mm hmm Like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. What's his name? Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Very memorable. Mm hmm I almost called him Michael Cotton for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. That's my number five and four. What's your number five? Uh, so for me, it wasn't a question of if there was going to be a Wes Anderson movie on my list. It was which one. And it was really tough for me because Grand Budapest is my favorite Wes Anderson movie, but Bill Murray is in B Grand Budapest for maybe 15 seconds. Um, and Royal Tenenbaums, he's in it, in and out the whole movie roughly, but not He's certainly not the centerpiece of the movie. He is absolutely a side character. Yeah. It's really tough. And then I was like, well, it's a Bill Murray list. So I'm going to pick one that Bill Murray's really in. And that pretty much narrowed it down to Rushmore and Life Aquatic. Mm -hmm. But then that broke my heart because I'm like, those are two of the, like, oh, those are on the bottom. I love every Wes Anderson movie. I really haven't seen one I didn't like. But that means I can't put a Wes Anderson movie really high because I don't, neither of those are my favorites. So... My number five ended up being Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou, wow. um, which is a movie that I do really very much so enjoy. I love that movie. Um, why, wow. I really wanted it to be Rushmore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 
That's where we differ. Yeah. <laughs> on our on our list. We we like Rushmore for very different reasons. Um but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. I'm interested on that. Sure. But uh yeah. It's this is it's Bill Murray's movie. It's got the Wes Anderson flavor. It is easily like so unique from all of his other movies. Which I don't really think he has a movie that really feels the same as any of his other movies. Uh, but this one, you know, being all the ocean stuff, a lot of the claymation, a lot of the paper, it's like stop motion, whether it's paper or clay, um, all of it is just like very cool, very unique. I really love the characters in this. I love Angelica Houston in this. I love Jeff Goldblum in this. Willem, Willem Dafoe with the infamous absolute drip in this movie is incredible. Am I lying? I really, really want, uh... Every now that I'm, I've married into a scenario where the fr- my wife's friend group has a themed Halloween party every year, and I'm just begging for the one where I can dress like Willem Dafoe from Life Aquatic and it be appropriate to the theme. Uh, because you could, you could go out in public like you that. could the Adidas's he wears are dope. Yeah. Also, especially made in yeah, like incredibly hard to find a pair that is even similar to them, yeah, and like they probably have a custom. I I have I've literally probably spent thirty days. I found thirty days, thirty minutes one day trying to find and like thirty the, nights the closest pair of Adidas's that I could to those, and it is tough. You can make them online, I think. probably a custom job. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, I just really love the style of that movie, and it's definitely not my favorite Wes Anderson movie, but I don't have an like. I don't not like any of his movies, so I felt I felt okay with it. And then my number four was Ghostbusters. Yep. Which brings us to my Wes Anderson movie number three, Herman Bloom from Rushmore. Ugh. This character is fucking hilarious because he hates his life, well, wife and life, because his son's not what he expected his sons to grow up to be. His wife's cheating on him. He... Later on in the film, gets divorced. She takes everything because he was cheating on her. But he finally finds happiness with a woman. And obviously, being married and everything. Every character in this movie goes about things the wrong fucking way. Clearly! No debating! Right. And that adds humor to the audience in this dramedy. Because it's not supposed to be funny, but with Wes Anderson's stamp on it. And his flavor, his style, it makes it humorous. And to see old man... Because Bill Murray's had gray hair for fucking longer than he's had brown hair. Right. To see him stoop down to this 15-year-old's <laughs> level by, like, breaking his bike chain, running mm-hmm. over his bike, doing shit like that mm-hmm. is fucking gold to me. I love it. It's hilarious. And you do see the character get out of his depression and in the end, like, everybody fixes things for the best and realizes, hey, we're some fucking idiots. We were too wrapped up in ourselves. Well, the main two characters realize they were too wrapped up in themselves and they kind of fix things. They mend things. The bridge is now drivable that they blew up. So with the arc, the Wes Anderson flavor... And Bill Murray's just playing Avery scene to perfection. In my opinion, it had to make my list. But it's not his movie. He has someone to play off of. Very, Jason Swartz killed it in that movie. Men. J- yeah, Jason Swartzman. Very good in the movie. Max Fisher. But that's my number three. Number two is going to be Frank Cross from Scrooged. That's my number three. This in my opinion, is on his level of assholeness. We began with Ghostbusters, and now we hit the top, the most extreme of Bill Murray's assholeness on camera. Say what you will about the man off camera. But Scrooge is just fucking hilarious. You're goddamn right. He's a dick bag. Yeah. Uh... Bobcat Goldwire's character, he fucking ruins that guy's life. Yeah. Like, to the point where he's trying to kill him through the whole movie. But 
throughout all the meanness he puts into the world and hatred he spews and lives he ruins and people he pisses off and hurts he comes out a better man at the end of the movie yeah. with this Bob Cratchit a Christmas Carol scenario and I fucking love that because when I was a little kid I loved a Christmas story mm. not a Christmas story a Christmas Carol whether it was Mickey Mouse uh how about the Muppets the I didn't see the Muppets oh the Muppets Christmas Carol is great I still haven't seen the Muppets Christmas Carol no whether it was Afford Afford was the uh Muppets one right you know Al no wait, Alfred wait the Pennyworth <laughs> what's that guy's name Bruce Wine. You know what I'm talking about. Fucking Christopher Nolan's granddad. He puts him in every goddamn movie. What's that guy's name? Michael Caine? Michael Caine. Yeah. That's the Muppet one, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty sure. Where, whether whoever Michael Caine, yeah. is in the role, I fucking... Austin Powers is dead. Yeah. I, I, I love it. It's amazing. And this new take on it just works best for a teenager, 20-year-old... Like myself, when I started watching this movie, and it just carried on that love mm. because of how Bill Murray's performance was in this movie, how he took it to an extreme, toned it down, had fear, humbled himself, and to make that believable on camera, to give me investment to that character that I did like because he was an asshole who hated Christmas, and to make me like him for a completely different reason at the end of the film, yeah, is a incredible job by bill murray yeah um scrooge is like uh scrooge is the typical bill murray character he is in a lot of movies where he is just an absolute asshole and then has some sort of arc and by the end of the movie is at the very least a little bit less of an asshole uh and so but he just does that so well and scrooge is one of those movies where it's like my dad let me watch it way younger than I should probably should have watched a movie like Scrooge. Um, and I remember just being incredibly intrigued. Uh, I remember being terrified, like the, the scene of him being stuck in the casket about to go to the incinerator, like was no pun intended, like burned into my brain for years. (laughs) Like, I just remember that scene so specifically. Uh, and it's because I remember being like freaked out by it when I was a kid but not so scared that I didn't want to see it. Like I didn't, I didn't start crying. It was just like, it was just intriguing. Exactly. Yeah. It was so intriguing. Uh, and I also just really love like modern. Well, it's not so modern anymore, but when you look at the grand scope of the world, modern twists yeah. on classics. Um, and I think Bill, Bill Murray was like, I don't know that anyone else could have been put in this movie specifically. And it had been as good as it was. Cause it is also pretty freaking funny. Number that was your two two for you yeah so that was my number three uh my number two probably your number one was Groundhog Day yeah that's my number one yeah um yeah it started a subgenre of movie that has produced almost exclusively good movies uh unless you count Happy Death Day to you no 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 Anyways, yeah, the original Groundhog Day, still the same Bill Murray arc. I'm an asshole. I go through some shit, and then at the end of the movie, I'm not an asshole anymore. But this one is just incredibly unique because it's really thought provoking. It's like, because it, it's almost impossible to watch that movie and not think, what would I do if I woke up on the same day every day but had all my memories from the day before, right? And he does most of the things that most of us would probably do. He gets really fucking good at piano. Like, He tries to off himself who knows how many times, but, uh, it's like, you can watch that movie and even though you might not be as much of a jerk as he is, you can connect to the character because you can think, what would I do if I was in this guy's shoes? And it is also really freaking funny. Um, especially when he just decks the guy in the face. It's my favorite part. Yeah. Phil's such a great character because of that reason. Yeah. Because... He gives you the sliminess in, like, small doses. Where he's like, you know, I'm going to have this plan where I'm going to get to know this woman and I'm going to sleep with her. Yeah. And then after that, he's just kind of like, you know, I'm bored. And, like, he does so much slimy shit, he gets it out of his system. Because there's no consequences. Mm-hmm. 
And then he tries to become a better person. That doesn't work. So he tries to kill himself. And then the climax. The reason why this is my number one is because I love the character character of Bill Murray people have in their heads. A smartass guy who ranges in levels of dickness. Mm -hmm. So I have this character I love already. But it's fresh because there's twists and turns. And that's because of the premise. Yeah. And that just makes the character more interesting, relatable, as you mentioned. And because that is my favorite Bill Murray performance. Ever! I think it's a certainly a valid number one. But like you said, this is our personal favorites. And my personal favorite Bill Murray movie is... It would probably be on a lot of people's number one, too, honestly. I think it should be. Uh, it's Lost in Translation. And he does share this movie with Scarlett Johansson, but... He's on the cover, uh, bitch. <laughs> if you are even remotely familiar with our YouTube channel, you have probably heard me talk about before how much I just really love when comedians do more serious movies. Uh, this is Bill Murray's spin at that. The movie's still funny in parts, but uh, definitely a much more like realistic, more grounded, more somber tone than any of his other movies. Um, and hits the name. It takes place in Japan. And so the setting that they are put in in this movie, where it's like... They are just tourists. They cannot even communicate sometimes. It it helps build uh, that feeling of like these two are basically alone together. Like they are in one of the biggest cities in the world, but they are still just alone together because of how isolated they are and how out of uh, their normal realm they are. Uh, and it's just a really interesting spin on what loneliness can push people towards. Uh, and what not feeling loved can push people towards because there's a massive age gap between the two. They acknowledge it in the film, but because of everything else that is going wrong in their lives and the emotional dips that they are in, it's like, it is, you can hit like people in real life hit a point to where all of a sudden they do not care where the attention is coming from. They don't care if it's from a married person. They don't care if it's from an older person or a younger person or someone that they may have not ever normally talked to in their entire life. Uh, it just matters that someone is actually making them feel somewhat special and important. And that's what this movie's all about. And it's also about all of those feelings sort of helping them realize what is unhealthy about that and that they need to fix their own shit. So uh, I really love the overall message of the movie and the real life aspects that the movie shows in an incredibly grounded way while still Getting some of Bill Murray's patented smart ashness, smart ashness, smart assness, and quirkiness. And him and Scarlett Johansson play really well off together. So, I talk about this movie a lot. And every time you talk about a movie a lot, I always ask this question hmm. Top 25? I think so. Wow. Yeah. Favorites. I yeah. thought it was going to be outside the top. 25 favorites. I, I really have to think about it. Not much. But Definitely within the top 50. I could see that all day. Well, I've been thinking about my favorite movies a lot lately. And like, I would hope so. Now that you're putting me... That video's coming up. Now that you're putting me on the spot about that, it's like... I've thought about so many movies over the past couple of weeks and whether or not I think they should be in my top 20. And it is like getting to the point where... Like, so what I'm learning is this 15 to like maybe 35 range is just tough because so I like all of them. So like they are very interchangeable. And so, you know, if you made me make a list of top 25 of my favorite movies right now, I'd throw lost in translation in there because I love that movie a lot. Uh, it is like a, it's a once a year, a movie for me. And, Good. and when there's that many movies, like a once a year, a movie is, that's that's, that's one impressive. of your favorite movies. Yeah. There's so many movies. So, yeah, I think, why not, you know? You heard it here. Let us know your top five favorite Bill Murray movies in the comment section below. Are you going to see Asteroid City this week? I am. See you it Friday. see Bill Murray. I will not see Bill Murray, but... I want to see it Saturday. Nice. Yeah. Let us know all that in the comment section. Scroll back up to the like button, share the video. And... Subscribe.